I'm here with Major Enner. Major Enner, will you tell me a little bit more about what Operation Hard Kill is? So Operation Hard Kill is a counter U.S. live fire exercise using both kinetic and non-kinetic means uh, that we had occur here for Drum New York. Uh, the intent of why we wanted to do Operation Hard Kill here is for us is to show proof of principle that we can actually do counter U.S. live fires uh, with both kinetic and non-kinetic systems uh, and also to use that to enable and expand our capabilities to do home station training for our soldiers who are continually rotating in and out of CENTCOM doing counter U.S. mission sets. Okay, how how has uh, the division seen the threat evolve? You know, you're, you talk about you know one way attack. Uh, tell me a little bit more about what that means. Um, you know, and and talk talk a little bit more about uh, you know, ISIS has been sending. You know, they've been you know messing around with UAS for many years now. Um, so, how have you seen that capability evolve in terms of say numbers of drones that they can deploy at once, a swarm, if you will? Um, is the size getting uh, more difficult to counter? Um, what are some of the concerns that you're seeing as the as the threat evolves? And uh, you know, obviously the the threat gets developed just like we develop our counter UAS capability. So, so it it really is almost like a, a race of mm -hmm. of either the enemy developing and evolving their their UASs to attack us versus us developing the technology that can actually counter that threat. And that's kind of where that you know quote unquote space race is. Uh, the thing about with uh, UAS and especially counter UAS is that it really gives any uh, government, non-state actor, entity an access to an air force um, because drones are small, cheap, you know, easy to reproduce. You know, it doesn't have a pilot associated with it sometimes. Sometimes UAS will fly by waypoints. Sometimes it's got a ground control station. Depends on whatever UAS you're trying to fly is. So how do we counter a various... Uh, not so much the different types of systems, but also the quantity of those systems because they are so quick to reproduce. So a lot of the technologies that we want to make sure we're seeing and and, and being able to learn about and 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 be able to use and operationalize and refine those tactics is, is based upon whatever the threats are going to be. And that's why 210, you know, another unit we're sending to CENTCOM is, is beneficial because they will have that most subject matter expertise. By the time they come across that mission set again, a few years after they just got done doing it, that threat might be vastly different because it might be how the enemy has evolved their systems to counter us countering them. So it's really a counter to counter to counter fight. Um, normally that's something you've seen like in the air defense community since, you know, we, we, you know, as air defenders, we're the ones who, you know, do, you know, take out the aerial threats, but because the, it's so large and, and so uh, now refined and innovative, it's gotta be a threat that everyone has to be able to counter. Uh, so for us, at least for 10th mountain as well, you know, so it's not going to always have access to, you know, programs of record, actual air defense systems. How do we refine and expand our training, not just for the CENTCOM mission set, but for a holistic counter UAS, uh, being able to do that mission set uh, in any AOR, right. uh, in Israel large scale combat operations, especially from a light infantry division where the soldiers are literally going to the battlefield with just a rucksack on their back, you know, and the weapon in hand. How can we train them to be able to do a counter U.S. mission set? Because those small Group one to group three drones that are small micro, you know, those can be something that can, you know, be facing as a threat in their in their environment. So obviously taking what we get from 210, also seeing what is coming down the pipeline of what industry is coming up with, working with DEDCOM to see what that's on the breach to be, you know, how do we how can we take that to actually enhance the 10th mountain training uh, for our infantry units uh, for and prepare them for large scale combat operations? Sure. Now you you know, it seems like there's a vast amount of capability that industry is bringing to the table, has brought to the table, and uh, you know that continues to grow. Um, obviously, you know, without naming names of industry participants, um, can you talk a little bit about you know how the Tenth Mountain is able to ingest this amount of technology and capability? Um, you know, take it in, decide you know this works for us, this doesn't for our mission. Um, you know, how do you manage the you know what is a large amount of capability coming from industry? So I think this can be literally something to learn from every system. Um, I kind of grew up on the principle that everything is an example, whether it's a good example you want to follow or a bad example of what to avoid. Um, this is kind of how I, when I, you know, teach my younger leaders, you know, how to how to go about it. It's kind of the mantra I teach them. And I kind of, you can apply that same type of principle uh, when it comes to working with uh, DEFCOM and the industry partners is that these systems, they're going to have a capability or they're going to say they have a capability. Um, and what we want to do is say, okay, here's what is being said, you know, um, 
does that meet the intent of what we're seeing downrange? Or maybe it's something that can be refined that way. You know, we want to make sure that's a competition that starts routed through DEF comp in that. So it's a matter of exposing the soldiers to that technology and then have them relay that information through DEF comp that can eventually get itself back to industry partners. Um, but for Operation Hardkill, some of the things that we said, uh, some of the things that we've seen uh, was different types of systems. Uh, one of them is using direct energy. So you're, that's one of our non-kinetic type systems that you're seeing. So it's not a you know an actual bullet taking down a drone. It's actual direct energy being used for that. Um, you have other systems that can be small as using like a, a five five six round, which is something you'd see like in a in a, in a M4 up to a seven six two, which you see in like in a cruise serve weapon, uh, all the way up to like a, a two point seven five rocket. Um, so it's just a, an expanding based upon whatever system is being developed. What munitions are using for those systems will help that because it wasn't taking consideration costs. We know that these drones are cheap to reproduce. You know, do you really want to expand something, some munition that can cost like thousands of dollars, or do you want to be able to use some sort of technology where it's like, you know, pennies on the bullet to be able to take out? And that's kind of where you're, where you're seeing the industry kind of driving that is so much the effectiveness of the system, but also the cost effectiveness of that system as well. Mm -hmm. Any kind of major lessons learned that you'll take to, you know, say, apply uh, to the training at, at Tenth Fountain or or beyond? I know the, that this equipment is going, you know, like you said, to a live fire at Red Sands Arsent. Um, so, you know, what are some of the very initial obvious things that, that you have uh, you're able to take away from this? Um, one of the biggest things I think we can take away and on this one is obviously like the logistics piece, making sure everything is good to go on that, uh, making sure you've done a lot of pre-coordination, your coordination as the things are going on and your coordination on the back end of making sure all the transportation requirements are good to go, uh, just making sure that gets solidified. I think for us at 10th Mountain, though, is how do we make this a routine thing? So Operation Hardkill is you know the first of its kind for 10th Mountain to actually do. But we don't want to be the last time we do something like this either. We know the threat is continuing to evolve. Our soldiers are going to come back with updated information. How do we routinely make this a thing that we can continue to update our tactics? And for that is more looking for how do we do those UAS live fires here at Fort Trump.